call sexy. You can see from the title, it's more of a love album. We do things like uh, songs that are a little, what we call, sexy. You can see from the title, it's more of a love album. What's good? What's good? I can't hear you. Yes, my bad. Welcome back to another week of Manversations 2020. Uh, you know, definitely have a fun show for you guys tonight. Uh, we wanted to keep it real simple, but uh, join along with uh, the viral sensation that's going along. Um, tonight's show is called The List, um, and we have several different lists that derive from the original list. 
So we just wanted to go, um, you know, basically talk about the list and uh, also bring up other lists and see what you guys think about it, your opinions on it. Um, <laughs> I know uh, we had a lot of great conversation, especially the other day, me and Major was on uh, Edwin's live. Uh, that was super dope, man. And we gave everybody a preview of Manversations 2020. Um, and it was so, so dope. Um, uh, yeah, so definitely want to um, bring that up and, uh, you know, let you guys see uh, what's going on with these lists and see if they're reality or they're delusional. All right. How y'all yes, fellas doing sir. tonight? <laughs> We live, man. We ready. Feeling mighty we fun. Live, mighty ready, fun. Been a long right. week, man. We I feel like we had an emergency call, man. We had to get on there with brother Edwin Shepherd and chop oh, yeah. it up. Shout out to that brother. That was a great experience on his live. <laughs> it was so serious. My man felt like he had to go live about it, man. Edwin ain't been in the talk show dating relationship sphere in a minute and like exactly. people was just raising so much hell about this list he was like man i gotta say something and yeah. um yeah we'll talk more about that later and you know how some people were really touched by what we had to say that's what's up exactly that was super dope i yeah, uh, love the great feedback uh edwin's a super dope mm -hmm. guy knows how to curate greatness and to line people up the way we should be aligned up correctly, whether it's here on our soil or he's doing it overseas on in Africa. Um, brother's yes. doing an amazing yes. job, you know what I'm saying? So shout mm -hmm. out to Edward Shepard for doing his thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep doing it. But like I told him, anytime he need any of us from the Manifestations crew to come out here and do some straightening and get everybody on the right track, then hey, you know, we all are open and uh, you know, our doors are open for him at any time. So that's you already dope. know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So tonight, mm -hmm. let's get into the list tonight. Uh, we're going to start off with the original list. All right. So the original list that is going viral right now is uh, this list that they have derived. Uh, this is what women were saying. Here's the list of places women absolutely refuse to go on the first date. And thank you to the ladies who reached out to me to help me on my list all right so i guess this was a woman who got help from other women and out of mm -hmm. all the suggestions of no first dates this is what they came up with all right so the first one was cheesecake factory y'all have a problem with cheesecake factory of course not nope okay. and remind right. and remind me to get back to that go ahead go ahead okay uh, second is Applebee's. Y'all got a problem with Applebee's? Nope. All right. Nope. Bobby? Yeah, 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 no. Nope, I got no, I may or may not, but uh, nope. All right, Chili's. Y'all got a problem with Chili's? Nope. I like Chili's. I actually like Chili's. I love Chili's. Um, Perfect spot for a first date. All right, Chipotle. Y'all got a problem with Chipotle? Uh, Chipotle might be cutting it, but you might be pushing a little with Chipotle. Yeah, but I would. I still don't I, I would. the problem. I would. You wouldn't. You, 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 you guys right. wouldn't for the simple fact of what factor you guys wouldn't take her to Chipotle. What would be the main reason, as far as date wise, like trying to get to know her? Chipotle is kind of like a fast food spot. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like. I kinda, Equated to upscale Wendy's, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. no, no, okay, okay. Um, Olive Garden, yay, nay, absolutely, yeah, no issue with it. absolutely. I don't, I don't like the smell of Olive Garden. I, the food is straight for me, That's it's just got this, mm -hmm. it's got this wet dog or wet <laughs> mop, <laughs> mop bucket floor, like, it got a mop bucket. <laughs> Smell oh, to wow. it. I don't know what it is, man. But I go in there. That's fine, just... but that. But see, that's more preference. You just don't like something about it. It's nothing yes. wrong with it. It's correct. Different. Correct. Correct. You correct. All right. So the yeah. next one is the movies. Do we have an issue with the movies? I think, 
No, I don't. Yeah, I sure don't. I have an issue with the movies. I know you do. I know you do, yeah. and that's okay. I can yeah. get. I can understand how a person might not like the movies, but to rule it out entirely, mm -hmm. eh. I would like, say I, I, can, I would say purposeful because I can, and we're probably going to get more into it, so I don't want to uh, flip that one over. But I'll say if you go in there for a specific purpose, as a as a cut and paste just option, no. But if you're going there for specific reasons, um, mm -hmm. then that's a different story. Correct. Yeah, okay. I, I think the ant and some of the other people who object to movies. Correct me if I'm wrong, and you're objecting mm -hmm. the movies because the movie is taking up. 90% of your attention span or whatever the case may be. You don't really get yeah. to talk to the person that much, correct? Yeah, yeah, because you can't talk yeah. to them. It's, it's very rude to talk in the theaters, period. And by the time a two-hour film go, it you know ain't going to be much time left on the date. Yes, now, I no, was we saying, can come back to that. I get it. Yeah, okay. I was saying, like, well, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll go back to that one. Okay. Uh, any fast food chain Bullshit. Definitely should be on this list. Bullshit. That that's saying all of them. That's saying that you know what's funny? That's yeah. even cutting out places. That's even cutting out the big name places, the expensive places. Because last I checked, Ruth Chris was a chain restaurant. Mm -hmm. But not but not fast food. Oh, fast food. Yeah, fast food chain. I can agree with that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm, I don't have a problem. I could do Buffalo. I could do Buffalo Wild Wings as a first date. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem. I'll do Buffalo Wild Wings for happy hour, but as for like as far as like a date date's concerned, nah. I, well, I would. You know, it, it all depends. It all depends on the woman. Maybe she might be a sports fan. Maybe she might like a team exactly. that. Yeah. So that's something else, and that's. And that's another thing with, and that's why the vast majority of these places I don't have an issue with because it's all circumstantial. Because remember, yeah. and we're going to get, well, I don't want it, well, no, because we're going to get there eventually. But uh, one of the very same places on this list just the other day all of a sudden became the it place again. So mm. it's so, you know, yeah. again, it's circumstantial and it's all circumstantial. So it depends on who uh -huh. the person is. Real right, talk. So wing stop. No, no, <laughs> no, no, okay, no, so, no. So, so hold up. So we, we could use a circumstantial point and say, what if we pick up some wing stop and go to the park with a blanket and eat and get to know each other? Maybe. I agree with that. Is that an option? I, I'm cool. That, that's fine by me. But well, when we're saying first date, I was I'm thinking, especially as far as food goes, I'm thinking that means we're sitting in and eating and you know enjoying the ambiance and everything. Wingstop right. barely got any spots to sit. I mean, Wingstop by and large was designed to get the wings and go out. That's why the inside it might have a bench or two or some seats, but it really ain't enough for you to kind of get all comfy and just sit back and you know just you know dig in like that. real talk, real talk. Okay. Shout out to Shooter in the building. What up, boss? What up, What's King? Up, what up? All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, red Lobster <laughs> with the special biscuits. Absolutely. I love Red Lobster. If she don't like Red, red lobster, lobster, she might get canceled if she don't like Red Lobster. Red I Lobster look, is everything. I don't want to hear none of these fake, bougie, wannabe city chicks talking about they don't like any FSA chicks. Talk about they don't uh -huh. like Red Lobster. And then, and then secretly, when no one's paying attention, they go and they just sneaking a biscuit out the out the bag and just munching on it. You know they do. You know they do. Don't don't, don't that brand new. Or they want to think that because they buy them, if they have um, if they're served in the frozen section, because they do have the, the um, biscuits in the frozen section in some grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Don't be buying them out there or trying to make your own version and then acting like you're too good for no, no. Let's not do that. Let's not fake. <laughs> Them biscuits here. <laughs> Real talk. Oh, here. I, Real. I skipped. I skipped one. I didn't even see. I skipped one. It says your house. Your house is good for a first date. It mm. depends on the woman. As a rule, no. As okay. a rule, in, no. In most uh -huh. cases, no. That that's that's under the Netflix and chill category, right there. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, a buffet. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, buffets is cool. I think mean, depends on the buffet. Okay. Yeah, depends IHOP. on the buffet. Yeah, I hop sure. Okay. Sure. Denny's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Denny's is. Uh, I can't do Denny's. I don't know. I feel like Denny's. Denny's let me let me go let me go back on I hop in fact. I hop <laughs> or Denny's? Nah, nah. I can't do either one of them on a first date. Nah. As a first date, no. Now. Nah, uh, I personally, have- I, I love I love IHOP's food. I mean, if I, if I want breakfast food quick, IHOP is the spot. Danny's is where I go to if there's no IHOP available, or if I'm trying to be in and out quicker because they tend to serve food a little faster. But as a first date for either of them, no. no. What if nah. you guys were out just parlaying, and you know, it was like she was like, "Hey, man, let's just you know uh, head over to IHOP for the second Different half of the day." Different story. That that's cool. Uh, and let, let me kind of drill down on a little bit. Yeah. When we talk about places that we're going on a first date, in my mind, I'm talking like you hit up on the phone, like, "Hey, babe, go ahead, put some clothes on. Um, I want to take you on a first? Um, I think we should go out on a date. Um, yeah. Just for IHOP. I'm not doing that. right. If we're out, right, we're doing right. something else. Maybe we went to the park. Maybe we um, you know, went to a museum or something. We just saw an exhibit or a concert. We're leaving. We're hungry. IHOP is open. That's what yeah. I'm talking. But oh, as far as this is the this is the primary, this is the original objective. Mm-hmm. No. Nah. All right. Okay. okay. The gym. Absolutely. Bobby, have you invited a girl on first date to the gym? It mm, as a first date, no. Oh. Now, I I would do a meetup. I, I definitely believe in and I advocate for. Uh, the meetup or the quote unquote meet and greet where you get to know, where you, you know, kind of meet each other for the first time, you feel comfortable to public space, just, you know, no pressure, whatever. I advocate for um, things like that. I know everyone doesn't do happy hours, everyone doesn't um, do drinks, or whatever, or tea or coffee or whatever. Um, but mm-hmm. the gym is definitely, especially if you guys are both active and that was part of the attraction, the gym is cool for a meetup. Like, okay, let's see if we want to actually do anything serious later on or go someplace afterwards. But as far as a first date at the gym, nah. Okay. Can't close that. All right. Church. You got a religious woman. Would you take her to church Absolutely. for the first date? Absolutely. Bobby? As a first as a first date, no. Not as a okay. first date. And I kinda and the reason why I kind of feel this I feel the same way about church as you do about the movies, because again, what is the the purpose of the day is we're getting to know each other and everything. You know, we go to church to worship. We're focused on the service and everything else. We're really not there to really focus on each other like that. I mean, we can be there or whatever, but that's not really the purpose of why we're here. You know, mm-hmm. so. What if she wanted to see the God in you and that was the way for her to see that? That's that's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm I'm all for that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't go to the church. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying as a first date, not so much. So now, if we're looking to, if we're looking to go on a date after church, or whatever, or you know, let's go to Red Lobster for a date mm-hmm. after service, then yeah, absolutely cool. You know, we go to the church, we have worship, whatever. You know, kick it, we vibe, we fellowship. Then afterwards, we head to IHOP. That's cool. That's perfectly fine. But okay. again, the church as the destination, nah. Would you like to see the demons come out of her in church if she was one of those people? Maybe the church I'm sure she would decline church. going in the first place if it was like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everybody oh. said amen. Out of you. She's like, amen, amen. I'm like, oh, <laughs> hell. Oh, no, no, no. All right. Next one is. Um, uh, Starbucks. Starbucks. You had an issue with Starbucks? Meetup? Yes. First date? No. So Starbucks is cool, but um, for meetups, but not first date. Precisely. If I anything, like, we would go to Starbucks like first, Starbucks. and then afterwards we go for um, the date elsewhere. I like Starbucks as if I. I to me, that's one of my preferred places to go on a first date if I'm getting to know somebody. 
um, Starbucks would be a fave of mine's, uh, a go-to for me to do. Uh, coffee dates. I like coffee dates. Uh, I use those as uh, meetups first to find out if we're going to do something, you know, a bit more committal later on. But I love coffee dates. Okay. Coffee dates. So coffee dates, great. Uh, there's a tea house or a tea shop somewhere. That's dope. You know, everything doesn't have to be a happy hour all the time or two for one drinks, that kind of thing. You know, just, you know, get a, a decent coffee roast. You know, we get different kinds. You know, what, what, what styles you into? Different teas, exchanging notes about that and conversation about that. Absolutely. So you would do a coffee date, but you wouldn't do the Starbucks. I'm just, I I have coffee dates and Starbucks in the same class. That's that's for me for meetup. So before we get to the date, before mm -hmm. we even go on the on the actual first date, you know. Oh, okay. So these are, I want to. Yeah, these are those things. Are, right. Those are like you know those are meetups, and then you know. After the meetup, if the vibe is intact, I've gotten to meet you, get a sense of you. I'm actually interested in, you know, a deeper financial or deeper time commitment as well. Then we go to some of these other places or whatever. But okay, so, we... so so you so you're basically saying you rather do meetups before the first date. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Bobby, that's oh, a thing. Major, what you think about that? What you think about the the Starbucks and the coffee dates? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, Not okay. Um, yeah, the Starbucks. I mean, I think that's a date. It's just a, a, a less serious date, but it's a date. Is you know that the woman is going to take that as a date. You can't have a non-date date. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. <laughs> that's going to confuse the hell out of women. You know what I mean? Like I, I think that. Starbucks, you know, Starbucks is actually to me a great concept for a date because number That's one, yeah, it, it's you know, it's very light food, if any food. You're not spending a lot of money and you're just kind of sitting down, and the focus is the two of you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? There's not really much else to, to focus on, it's just you two, the coffee and the table. Correct. And you can really, really get into somebody at a Starbucks, you know, coffee date, whatever Indeed. you want to call it. I think that's an ideal first date. Actually, that's probably one of my top three or top five out of this whole list. Real talk. Yeah, that's what I was telling Great. Bobby. That's uh, Starbucks is my main go to uh, when yeah. it comes to that. Uh, great place if you're just trying to get to know somebody without any distractions. And basically, mm -hmm. a lot of times when people are looking at you, they they probably thinking y'all in there with a business mind. You know, they're looking at you as uh, two Bro. people trying to network and 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 build together. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the uh, uh, ambiance of it also puts you in a in a great light as well. So uh, that's why I say uh, that's one of my go tos. All right, so ice cream no dates. Doubt. Hell yeah, ice, ice cream dates. Yes, I, I'm I'm cool. Same with ice Yes, Man, yes, absolutely. Mm. Family Let's function. Let's do this Coldstone. <laughs> good Coldstone. Family function. Jackson's. Man, Jackson's is like going out to, is like going to I, the fair. Jackson's Man, ice cream. I still got to get a Jackson's. Home. I've heard Even, nothing but good stuff. I still oh, have man. yet to get out there, but I've heard oh, nothing really? but good reviews. Yeah, well, you need to hurry yeah. up and get a date and go out there, buddy. <laughs> hey. Cleveland's too. Definitely heard about Cleveland's also, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, popping though. It's popping. Family functions. Nah. Nah. Okay. Nah. nah. We can agree on that. Nah, nah. And hell nah. You have to earn the, the, the right to meet my family. Hell. You know what I'm saying? That and for that same reason, shoot, I'll be honest. Um, this is just my opinion, so I'm nobody, so don't mm -hmm. listen to me. But mm -hmm. ladies, if talk about he wants to take you right off the bat to meet his family or whatever or first date is at the family barbecue whatever you would not be wrong if you did not return his phone calls or messages or, or block them <laughs> no dude should be that quick to, 
Because trust me, if he goes and invites you that quickly out that he doesn't even know you from a can of paint yet around his family, first off, he does with every chick he meets, number one. Yeah. And number two, mm-hmm. I'm looking at his family sideways because if he, even if he doesn't see anything wrong with that, I'm sure his mama, his sister, his uncle, or some of them are looking like, hey, man, why do you keep bringing all these girls around that don't last more than three, four, five weeks? What's going on with you, man? The yeah, fact that nobody's bad. uncomfortable with this, eh, that's, that, that should be a red flag. But again, that's just me. Don't don't yeah, no, listen no, to me. That's, that's a lot. That's <laughs> that's a lot. Um, that's a lot of yo. What up, Rich? Um, that's a lot Rick, of Rick. Um, a lot of people right. saying that because my ex just told me. Um, she told the stepdaughter, you know, my stepdaughter as well at the time. Um, her her current daughter. Um, she told her, "Hey, look, you out here dating." Don't bring no dude around me that ain't gonna be around you. Straight up. If, it, right. if that person not gonna be around you for a long time, don't even introduce me to them. When they ser- when you mm. serious about them, then then bring them here. But right. she did huh. say, she did say that she do um want to see what their face looks like. So that's right. that's on the table, regardless. I want to know right. what that yeah. person looked like just in case. Something happened to my baby girl. I know who is responsible for it, but otherwise, sure. from you know, just carrying around or you know, just parlaying around and bring it to no, she she doesn't approve of that. So I I respect that. You know what I'm saying? As a parent, that's the Real type cool. of honesty you want to give your children because it also gives the motivation to know, like, hey, if this person I don't see this person serious, then I'm not going to waste my my family's time introducing them. So. Kudos to people who think like that. So don't think you're alone. Uh, no. All right. So the next one is movie night. Netflix, Hulu, etc. That goes right back to doing <laughs> that. Goes right back to being at the house. Hey yo. <laughs> hey, salute, Ricky. Man said, I don't want to go to a high end restaurant. Without knowing if she could hold utensils correctly yet. Look, man. Look. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, oh. listen. Let me tell you oh. something. Let me man. tell you something. What's going on, Jenny? What up, Jenny? That's real. Um, Shout out, Jenny. You you're, right, you're right on time, my welcome. Let me tell you something. What he's saying is a hundred percent correct, man. As much Lord. as we want to laugh about it, I, I was just talking about this the other day. We don't have the, the etiquette classes. I ran into a woman and I follow her on, on Instagram. I'm going to inbox her and get her on our show because I want she does etiquette classes for women, young girls. Wow. Remember growing okay. up when we when we used to grow up, we used to see that back back in the days they used to have commercials for it. You know what I'm saying? And it was teaching, yeah. you know, it's always white women and all that, teaching them how to set plates and all that stuff. It was something that yeah. they very advertised back way back in the day. But after like different generations, it just diminished. But I think it's mm-hmm. very important because you got people picking up salad forks or setting the table with salad forks and you need real forks. Like, how do you expect this... me to grab my meat with this small fork? Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. hey, yo. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what I don't expect happened? you. I don't expect you to do none of that. He's not around me, so you don't have to be my <laughs> today. I don't have any. Oh, shit. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So movie night, y'all yeah. approve of that? No, because that goes right back to coming to my house. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. Remember we talked about that? If you can't yeah. come to the house, we can't do movie night. So exactly. nah, we ain't there yet. Okay. Florida Memorial had etiquette classes without it. Okay, that's what's up. I didn't know that. Let's go. Well, they See, got etiquette the, classes. How come all the animals be coming? <laughs> how come all the animals not... be coming out of Flomo? <laughs> Did I... <laughs> they you remember Flomo? Flomo yeah. is is just a college. They already there. You already who you are before you get there. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> all right. So I'm next one saying. is 
Next one is somewhere that requires a long drive. Uh, I, I would say no. No, because you no. got to be next to this person for a long period of time and there's nowhere That's else one. to go. That's mm. one. You dig? Okay. Number two, That's a long a drive. A small, confined space? Nah, 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 nah. And also a long drive. I, may, maybe it's my mind because I'm, I'm tainted from all the stuff I watch and everything else I read. But in my mind, take for a first date, taking somewhere, someone somewhere on a long drive, uh, that sounds like <laughs> only one of y'all will be coming back. <laughs> I'm just yes. that, That's another thing. Who does that? And where, Who even and does where that? At, the Everglades ain't that far away, <laughs> man. Them gators, them gators and pythons be hungry, man. Look. I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't want nobody to be ending up on the first 48 then about unsolved mysteries and these crime shows. I'm I, just cool out. I y'all like each other. plenty of time for that. Y'all can road trip half the year if y'all want to. Once y'all cool, but yeah. relax. That's right. That's true. What a, okay. So road bowling road. is bowling a good, a uh, good first date. Hell it's yeah. a great first date. Yeah, Great it's, a, it's a classic for a reason. I, yeah, I, I, I believe that. So, so Rick, Rick said, um, first date should be in a neutral place where we can exchange thoughts. Is bowling a is bowling a good place for you to exchange thoughts? If not, sure. give us some give us some some quick uh, comments, real quick, um, and let us know. All right. So next one is nightclubs. Hell no. No. Nah, that's not a good look at all. I don't know who that's, does that either. That's I don't wild. I don't know who does that either. That's, that's kind of <laughs> wild. You got no. you got some guys. The guys the guys that don't mind your house. The guys that don't mind the movie night. Uh, probably the ones that would do nightclubs. You know, because it all goes hand in hand. The right. the only way well, that well, could maybe, and I'm being generous, the only way that that can maybe work to me in my mind is if maybe y'all got like a VIP booth or a private section where it's just y'all or very few number of people, and you guys can be close and you know you got a little bottle of service or whatever, you can just you know privately just enjoy the shenanigans or whatever. To me, that's the closest. But even that, that's kind of a stretch. That's just you know. Or it could oh, be like God. it could be like that uh, restaurant. Uh, can't remember what that restaurant was. It kind of get like a Hawaii effect in Broward. Uh, gosh, I can't remember. They had fire. And oh, all that um, oh, I haven't been in a group. Oh, my uh, guy, my guy, my guy, my guy, my guy. My guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I that's like my guy. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll exempt it if it's a my guy type thing. You know. Um, <clears throat> See the thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, man, I, I've, I've, I'm guilty of this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've, um, actually tried, um, nightclubs on the first date, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you, man, you could really find out a lot about a chick from going on the first date to a nightclub. Real talk. It doesn't mm-hmm. sound ideal, but mm-hmm. keep in mind, I was a promoter. You dig? Yeah. Mm. And I went on this date with this one chick. She was real good looking. I've known her for a minute, but I just suspected that she was an animal. You know what I'm saying? And lo and behold, you know, we out there, we hanging, we chilling, we kicking it. She came there to see me that night. And, you know, as a promoter, you have to go kind of work the room, you know, pass out your cards, whatever, whatever, shake a few hands, thank people for coming, whatever. And I explained this to her before, you know, going, going there, like, hey, you know, I got to work the room a little bit tonight, but, mm. you know, you're going to be my primary focal point. And, mm. you know, I was dancing with her. You know, we had our own little spot back in the cut. You know, she just had that position where you kind of got your ass towards the guy and you looking out and, you know, the guy sipping his drink in the back, just chilling and whatever. And she grinding up on you and all that. Nigga, I went. To go pass out my little cards and shake a few hands, whatever the case may be, it couldn't have taken. No. And I explained this to me. Couldn't have taken no. me no more than fifteen, no more than ten minutes. Man, when I came back, this grimy ass tumbleweed was standing over there. What? Another dude just planted in the same spot where I was. <laughs> like what? 
it's levels. To, it's levels to garbage. You know what I'm saying? And like that was the top level of trash to me. You dig? So she got cut like permanently right then and there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, bro, I I explained you, this for a reason. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was gonna say, did yeah. you did she come with you or did she drive separate? She drove separate. We agreed we were gonna okay. meet there. You know what I'm saying? Smart, but we agreed. Smart, smart girl. This, right, but we agreed that this was a date. You feel me? Like we were mm. get going there to kick it with each other. We agreed on that. You yeah. dig? And then I come back and I see this girl, you know, posted up with the next dude. I mean, it was just plug and play, dog. Like, okay, well, he left. So, you know, this other dude, yeah, he's a dude. Okay, shit, you <laughs> you get his spot. And I mean, yeah. she's, sitting there, she's sitting there sipping on my drink that I bought, grinding up mm -hmm. on the next bed. I'm like, okay, this is, see, this is, this is when my vetting sister started to come into play. You dig? Because, mm -hmm. again, there's levels. Even within the confines of discussing trash, there are levels of trash that you can be. And like that just took yeah. the cake to me. I'm like, wow, this chick, she the kind of chick, man, like, yo, you leave town for a weekend, it's a wrap. You know, she doing the she bird man she, hair rub. As soon as your ass get on that she plane. Don't, boy, she go on a rampage, though. Yeah. Just hot that was, you know what I mean? Yeah, def definitely <laughs> dies the bullet on that one. Yes. All right. Um Next up is hookah, hookah bar. I don't smoke. I've never owned hookah bar. I don't smoke. Hookah bar so squat. Be, yeah, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be anything for me. If you guys smoke, then that that's cool. Uh, me, I wouldn't. Not get a hookah bar person. I would put for better or for worse. I would just I would classify hookah bar in the same category as a nightclub, personally. But mm -hmm. um, so I guess if you if you're for nightclubs, to me that would be the same thing. If you're against it, same vibe. But um, okay, it's up in the air. That's okay. fair. Um, a bar for just drinks? No. Mm -mm. No. Nah, first, not for just. At, for, first date? No. Now a meetup again, just trying to you know see each other for the first time, get a sense of each other. Absolutely, that's fair game. An actual date? First date? Nah. nah. All right, Waffle yeah. House. I have no problem with Waffle House as a later as a later date, but the first date. Okay. Uh, and sports events. You know, I think Waffle the House is a perfect first date. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I, it, 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 it's the perfect place. You know, in fact, I, nah. I'd say, I, I I would say taking a woman to Waffle House on the first date might be the answer to her prayers. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, know, I know where you're going. Oh, I know oh, where oh, you, oh, you, oh, you know why I'm here. <laughs> I know, you know why you're you, here. You know, I know why you know here. why I'm here. Mm, yes, do, yes. Let's go ahead and put it out there. Let's go ahead and put it out there. You see all these birds that be talking about, oh, the Sierra prayer. They, they, they want a man as perfect as Sierra. They want, oh, God, what did she do to get this perfect man? Oh, oh God, girl, I'm just saying the Sierra prayer, all that when, shit. When, Sierra's, when first out, that's date, what she did. Sierra's first date with Russell Wilson was to Waffle House. A Super Bowl champion and a G-list celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Their first date was to Waffle House. <laughs> all right? So... Let's just put this in perspective. You yeah. dig? So think about that. You know, you got all these chicks talking all this bougie shit. And see, the, the issue with me, yeah. I'll come back to it. Just let's finish the list and then I'll come back to it. Because <laughs> I got to cook. I, I got to cook. I got to hey, cook. Jimmy is wild. Oh, Jimmy is wild. Events. <laughs> sport events. Absolutely. Absolutely. I say, yeah. I say, yeah. Definitely. You guys mm -hmm. both in the sport mm -hmm. interested that that's a perfect first date okay. very memorable one mm -hmm. too especially if you guys go the distance um you know that's definitely going to be something you guys get the ref, um, ref, um flashback to refer to um you know one of the things that makes a first date a good place 
especially for men, because we start talking about uh, the price tags that, that's affixed to it, the amount of commitment that's evolved to it. One of the things that makes first date locations a lot more digestible for men, especially mm-hmm. if they're going to be on the pricier side, is first and foremost, it needs to be a place. And you would think that this is kind of self-explanatory or common sense, but it really isn't. Because a lot of dudes, when they're thinking about first dates, they're more concerned about making it enjoyable for her. Mm-hmm. And they leave themselves out of the equation because you're the other part of of, of this equation here. It's one plus one, not just one. Yeah. So mm-hmm. good first date locations ideally are places that you would go to or you were going to anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you're if you know, for example, that you're not big on eating seafood, you don't like seafood, you don't like fish, that kind of thing, whatever, but you try to impress her. So you're taking it to this nice, I wouldn't say high end, but at least four star seafood spot. Mm. Especially if it doesn't turn out the way you want to, maybe you find out that it's not going to work, you don't like her, or she's a boring date, or she's not going anywhere. You're going to feel kind of salty because you're going to feel like you wasted your money, like you wasted your time. Why? Because you know this isn't a place that you would have gone to anyways. Barely on the menu that you like, not a place that you really enjoy. Maybe it's a little out the way. So basically, you wasted your time because this is not a place that you actually enjoyed. Maybe she enjoyed it, but you didn't. And if you're not enjoying yourself on the date, then she should or she will be feeling that as well, too, which is going to make it less of an experience for her. So it should be a place that you're interested. It should be something that caters to her likes and interests, but also to your likes and interests as well, too. Don't get so caught up in trying to woo and impress her that you forget to make sure that you're interested as well. And the thing about that is is this, this is why I have a big issue when women say, uh, I like a man who just takes control, shows leadership by picking a place, telling me to be ready at eight, and telling me what they are tired of wearing. And this is why I think a lot of this list is being brought up, because a lot of guys are telling them, hey, get ready by eight, picking you up, and taking them to the places that they like versus figuring out if that's a place that they want to be there as well. So yeah. there's a, there's a downside. There's, there's too much cloud chasing. To that. And that's one of the reasons why I advocate for people meeting up first. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say and have said when you talk about this, well, y'all not having phone conversations? Y'all not talking first? Y'all should be talking for a couple of weeks, this is and third. And there's some validity to that. But here's my thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you can have a conversation with people on the phone. Ultimately, you can do the whole FaceTime thing. I personally find a lot of that, especially the FaceTime aspect, to be kind of awkwardish. And maybe that's because I don't do a whole bunch of that myself. Maybe if I was Mm -hmm. one of the people that routinely had those conversations with my friends or whatever, it would be a different story. Typically, if I'm on the phone with you, I'm on the actual phone with you or texting. I meet up in person or whatever. Mm-hmm. My ideal thing is there's no substitute for getting to know somebody than to actually be out in the wild. So we're out in public. I'm seeing you face to face. I can touch you. You can touch me. I can hear your voice. I can see your facial expressions. I can see your body language. I see how you mm-hmm. react to people and things in the environment. I get to actually see you being you. Yeah. It is yeah. very possible to talk to somebody on the phone. You've seen pictures or whatever. And then you go meet up. And who they are in person isn't the same vibe, isn't the same feeling as the person on the phone. Yeah. Maybe the way they choose to present themselves in person isn't what you envisioned. You can't possibly know that from just being on the phone, which is why I advocate for doing a a light, non-committal thing, meet up for drinks, meet up to Starbucks, uh, coffee date, ice cream date, something non-committal. If things are going well, hell, y'all meet up. And you guys really hit it off the bat, you might say, Hey, let's go and get a part from this. Actually, go on a real date now. Let's go to someplace a bit more up a level if they got space and we can just kick it because we don't want the um the day or the night or whatever to end. You can do that then. But yes. if y'all meet up at Starbucks and you know what, uh, I'm not feeling it. This isn't going the way I want to, especially for the ladies. It's yeah. no big deal to just go right to the bathroom or whatever and just, you know, not come back or just, you know, dismiss you, just go to the counter, pay for you, whatever, and you leave. No harm, no foul, or whatever. 
very yeah. easy to yeah. do. You don't have to feel obligated. Well, you know, he spent all this on me. I, I guess I got to be polite and just sit here, or he or someone feels offended because you got nah. We can do okay. that again if we like each other. There's plenty of time for this stuff. Too many people are trying to squeeze everything out the orange or the lemon up front. Mm. And that's usury. If we like each other, if we are feeling each other, again, you got plenty of time for all these deeper things and these experiences that you see other people on social media having, which is what a lot of people are really chasing after. But if you don't like this person, then what's going to matter the most is being able to salad. You, You found out what you need to know. We don't click. We don't work. Cancel this as quickly as possible so that there's we, we've minimized the amount of investment we've made. We've minimized how much money is being spent. We've minimized how much time is being wasted here. No harm, no yeah. foul. Mm. Okay. Real time. All right. So I got a couple more lists to run through real quick. Uh, So we'll just run through them real quick, all right? So the next list, this list Mm -hmm. actually made the news, right? So we talked about this Mm -hmm. Cheesecake Factory that uh, um, pretty much, okay, so they basically just redid it. So it actually made the news, right? This came off, I forgot what news station posted this list because it went viral. So Mm -hmm. they just revamped the list. Fox Fox 13, local news. No, no, no. This was an (laughs) out-of-state, this is an out-of-state news Oh. Us. I don't remember which one. All right. So the next list we have, uh, the ladies strike back a new list for of um, men that have no business dating, period. So this list came up and women mm-hmm. felt like this is a list for guys who should not be dating. Oh. All right. I, All think right. That was a, I think that was a third list. This is a third list? No, I got... Yeah. I got, I got, I got a whole yeah. bunch. Okay, because th- yeah, because yeah, I know there was a list that came out um, from the dude from some dudes to uh, clap back at the previous one, and then this one yeah. came after that one. But there's all kind of lists out now, so who knows anymore? Yeah, yeah. All right, so th- this one is men with toddlers or younger. Hmm. So newborns and toddlers, mm. men with newborns and toddlers shouldn't <clears throat> date. Uh, men <clears throat> that live with their mama shouldn't date. Men that live with their baby mama shouldn't date. DL men shouldn't date. Men that don't have a valid driver's license. Uh, men that bank with cash out. Men that sag their pants. Men that don't take care of their kids. Men that disrespect women. Men that don't own a suit. Men that live in motels. Men that want to hold a couple of dollars till you get paid. <laughs> um, <laughs> men, men's clothes oh in tubs. Men's clothes in tubs. I have not seen that. Um, wow. Men that can't log into anything without help. <laughs> men that got to tell their mama everything. Men that work in FedEx Hub. Men that work uh, for temporary service, truck drivers. I feel offended by that. So truck drivers <laughs> shouldn't date. I, I would love to hear why truck drivers shouldn't date. Like um, money, okay. it's, one of the, it's one of the top blue collar jobs out there. But hey, you know, um, hmm. them grand rising men shouldn't date. Okay, uh-huh. them, just say. Like- for numbers 18 and 19, just write Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 18 and 19, write me. Uh, them what what you doing men uh, shouldn't date. Mm-hmm. Uh, men with multiple kids and baby mamas. Men that bash women on social media. Men that have a low... Um, men that have to load their car to add money to it. Uh, men that don't keep their locks up. Men that hairline gone, uh, but they keep holding on. Men that always talk about what they used to have. Married men and men with trans- men without transportation and men that are Cowboys fans. Jesus. That's the, that's the <laughs> best one on the list. <laughs> well, 
The last one I can't disagree with. <laughs> that last one is the, the best. The last one is valid. That this last is one is just, valid. This is just a straight misandrist list. I, I'm not even going to take this shit serious. Um, yeah. It is. Let me tell um, you. Look, I, and even... Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, this is like low energy. I, I don't know. It, it tells me more about the women or the woman that created this list. It lets me know how much low energy men she comes across. Yeah. Or yeah. men, men that are quality that don't give her the chance, the time of day, because grand rising men are pretty much men of quality uh, for the most part, and truck drivers are men of quality for the most part. So. If you have a problem with those two, those are more likely men that won't give you the time of day um, and you have an issue with them. Yeah. That's my sense. Let me just say something. Let me just say something real quick because you hit on something. And I just want to go back, you know, to I want to go back to the live that we were on this week where we were discussing this, right? Yeah. You were talking about how that second list is. Just a bunch of low energy bird babble, basically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which it is. But the other list is also a bunch of low energy bird babble. These women are not elevated women who, you know, are really trying to, you know, come up with solutions. That list was created to take a shot at men, you know, mm-hmm. for the places that men sometimes take women. You understand what I'm saying? Probably by a bunch of women who never even get asked out on dates if we keep it in a buck. You understand? Because we went over the the list and most of the places that we, you know, spoke on, we agree it's not really an issue. It's debatable on some of them, but most of them it's okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So... We, first off, you know, to go back to that conversation, there were some mm-hmm. ladies that came on before we came on. And mm-hmm. one of the sisters was, you know, all up in arms about the way that men were calling, you know, some of the women that were um, responding out of their name and just talking in general about, you know, the type of women that made this list. Oh, my God. They, You know how they like to do. They like to pretend they ain't never heard a cuss word before, right? Mm -hmm. They like to pretend Mm -hmm. they never heard somebody refer to someone in a disparaging way. You know what I'm saying? When it's a man who's who's doing the referring in a a disparaging way. Because Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj, every other word is bitch, ho, ho, bitch, ho, bitch, fuck you, cunt. Every other word. Talking about other women. But when a man Mm -hmm. says it, oh, Lord, they're so disrespectful. Oh, Lord. And they want to get fake offended, right? Okay, yeah, so, so she, she's on there getting fake offended about, oh, all the men is just talking so bad about these wonderful women. And she's not taking the time out or, you know, using the common sense to, okay, fine, I don't agree with men, you know, talking down on sisters either. But why are they talking down on them? You understand mm. what I'm saying? What is the thing that was done that provoked that response? You want to ignore that altogether and somehow make this the men's fault. The men were sitting there minding their own goddamn business, not doing nothing. And some mm-hmm. group of women just decided to make a list of all the places these shitty ass niggas like to take us on a first date and post it up so they could get clicks and laughs or whatever. And it went viral. But that whole list from the jump was misandrous bullshit. You understand what mm. I'm saying? That was not meant to be creative or bring us together or, you know, mend fences between men and women. That was some gender warring misandrous bullshit. The very first yeah. list was like that. And nobody yeah. says that. You know, in yeah. fact, another sister was like, well, it's just the internet. It ain't that serious. Which was oh, predictable yeah. because that's what they always do. Make an yeah. excuse when a woman is out of line. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, it's not cool. It's not just the internet. A lot of people, they're not savvy enough to, you know, discern real life from what people do on the internet. And a lot of people carry this bullshit into their everyday lives. That's yeah. the problem. You dig? So I just wanted to throw that in there. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. None of these lists, 
none of these lists are coming from a good place. Ma or the All overwhelming right, so majority of them are. Go ahead. All right. So I got a I got I got a couple more lists real quick. So let's see if there's some ahead, quality ones out of this. All right. So the next I list I got one is, I think I think if I'm not mistaken, I think uh Mila hey. might have I think Mila might have reposted this one. I took okay. this off of Mila's page if I'm not mistaken. Um, See the list good. of people who don't give a damn where y'all think you should go on a first date, adults, uh -huh. potential wives, men who are pr prioritized saving over spending, responsible mm -hmm. adults, down to earth women, people with personality, smart Ooh. adults, Whoa! someone with critical Rewind. and women Whoa! or husband. Long term, not a simp for a nice meal and everyone else. Woo! Hey, I got to repost that. This one came from a good place. Mila yeah. Renee never ceases to amaze me, bro. Like, Mila Renee is one of the sharpest sisters out there, period. She's right up there with Erica Lachey, in my view. You yeah. dig? Yeah. This is the sharp. She, should, like, she, she, she don't miss. miss. Yeah. She don't miss. That's a quality list. That one came from a good place. I like that I, shit. I love that. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. So, um, uh, tell so them, next, next list. I should probably save that one for last. Uh, <laughs> um. Next list is uh, this one. Okay. So, this list says, um, all right, I took a few minutes to make a list of what's really important on the first date. Take notes. All right, so this is made by Alfredo Sanchez Ortiz. So this is coming from, I guess he would be what you would call Dominican. Uh, he looks black, right? So I is that you, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't shit. Boy, they will bite no. your ass so quick. You said Dominican looks black. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, they always know. throw their black umbrellas under the bus. So we don't have to. I ain't no nigga. <laughs> um, the next hair, the next nigga. Hair, the hair salon or barbershop, you walk by, you going to get shaped. Come on, missus. <laughs> I, I, I took a few minutes to make a list what's really important on the first date if you really want to impress her. Uh, be there early so, she, so you don't leave her waiting. Uh, grab her some flowers and a small card, letting her know you appreciate her time. Open doors for her. Compliment her. Wow, you look beautiful. Settle her in with a hug. A hug can determine a lot. Uh, smell good. And she'll be thinking about you even when she gets home. Major key uh, alert right there. Be attentive. Major key. Be attentive. Stay off your phone. Uh, mm. lead, the date, lead the date. Make sure to smile. Make sure to smile and keep eye contact. Make her laugh because a sense of humor is everything. Always walk on the outside of the street. Ask her how she's feeling and if she needs anything. Keep the conversation interesting. Stay in the moment. Remember that an ex does not exist. Be honest. Don't make the date all about you. Let her speak. Know something about the menu to recommend. Mm -hmm. Make sure you handle the whole bill. Let her know that you had a great time when wrapping the date. If she lets you drop her off, walk her to the door. Text her once you get back in your car to make sure she is safe. Okay. I, I love the I list. I love the list. Anything except anything for number wanna, two. Except number two. Grab her I, some flowers in a small car, letting her know that you appreciate her time. Okay, go ahead. Baby. Yeah, Put. I have. I have a problem with number two. Um, okay, that's where you go. Unfor unfortunately, you know what I'm saying. In this day and age, a lot of women, you you cannot. That may signal to them that you're a simp. Unfairly as it may be, I think it's a good gesture. I think it's a kind gesture for a deserving woman. But 
first dates set precedents. They establish boundaries. They establish rules. And you don't want to do too much too soon. Yeah. Because people read that the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If there weren't so many damaged women running around, yeah, that would be pop. You dig? I, I totally love the idea, but for the current dating environment that we're in, where it's been yeah. proven that one in three women go on dates just for a free meal. You understand what I'm saying? That, you know, a lot of women are running around, you know, just as you just said, banging on dudes that say things like grand rising and good morning, beautiful. You know, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you're not casting pearls before swine. You understand what I'm saying? You need Indirect. to be very sure of that. And a first date might not be the time to do that, in my view. Everything else, mm -hmm. I, 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 and and I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. Um, making sure that you pay for everything might not be, depending on the type of woman you're dealing with, that might not be a good idea either. This is why it's important to talk to people and vet them before you even take them out. Some of these women, they feel insulted if you want to pay for everything. You understand what I'm saying? They feel like you're being controlling. I'm telling you what I know. You know, so especially some of these East Coast liberal women. Oh, you hold a door open for them and they got a problem. I can do it myself. So you, you got to be really, really mindful. Yes, the idea is a good one, but I would caution brothers um, about painting with a broad brush uh, regarding some of those things that are just condition, uh, just considered traditional chivalry with some of these modern women. They don't not only do they not take kindly to it you dig mm -hmm. they some of them just outright don't like it you know what i'm saying they consider it an affront to so-called independence so just free game right there you dig all right Careful. so jenny, all that, jenny, but... jenny says she likes number seven be attentive stay off your phone yes i agree i was That's gonna say thing. um Actually, you can go ahead and pull this back up again. There's okay. a few of those that I think um, are absolutely great for men, but also apply both ways. One of them is being number seven. Number seven, while it can definitely apply to dudes, that one also, I think, tends to be more applicable to women. Yeah. Because I know they've had issues before in conversations and dialogues and social media with posts going viral about women loving to take pictures of the food and all this other stuff and... Everything has, you know, be a, um, a an IG boomerang, this or whatever. And I've seen yeah. some women defend it because, of course, you know, they just got to defend that which is indefensible, saying, well, of she could be a content creator. What if she's doing this because this is part of how she gets her metrics up? Which is goofy. Hashtag really, always an excuse. Really? Yeah. Always. always an excuse. But let's oh. go ahead and let's go ahead and just entertain that for a second and and give that some credibility. Okay, she's a content creator, or she makes money. Part of how she makes money is by taking videos like this. Okay, cool. First off, if that's the case, that means that that's work, which means she is now working while on a date with you, and she should be focusing on you. Correct. If that's Correct. the case. Let me go ahead and pull out my laptop and start responding to emails or taking calls <laughs> and making business deals while I'm at the table then. Since we can obviously right. be on a first date or even a second date and work while we're there at the table. Fair game, mm -hmm. right? Don't think right. so. Mm -hmm. If you're here for me, you're here for me. If I'm here for you, I'm here for you. It right. should be right. my attention on you, your attention on me. And if you can manage to muster up this section of time, because this was preordained, you scheduled and everything. If you are unable to etch out this little period of time just for me, then we shouldn't be dating. And truth be told, I don't think you should be dating. You got too much going on. You're too busy for dating. So that's how I feel about right. like number seven. I feel the same way about number... Uh, which one is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Why did I miss it? Oh. Number 13, quiet as it's kept. The idea that men do not know how to hold a conversation is humorous, 
because I can assure you just as many women are unable to maintain a conversation. A lot of women are very clueless about the mechanics of conversation. See, people say a lot of things, but don't actually understand what it is they're saying. Correct. They, they, True. they just know these things. Oh, communication is good, whatever. But they have no idea what the nuts and bolts are, what makes things work, and how they operate. They just say things because it sounds good or because they're genuinely ignorant of how these things operate. Correct. In order to mm-hmm. have conversation, you have to have knowledge, insight, you have to pay attention, and you also have to be able to know how to pick up my cues. If I'm having a conversation with you and I'm giving you cues and you're missing the cues, then it's not this is because of one side of the pair. It's not conversation. Mm-hmm. If I'm asking you a yeah. question and I, and I hear this, and one of the biggest indicators is for me is when people say they hate small talk. Because I can understand mm. that. Small talk isn't the most exciting thing on earth, but especially this is the first time we're really getting to know each other. Small talk is a necessity. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't have to be it's a, how's the weather going today? It's good, or how about them dolphins? It doesn't have to be that, but there has to be some light, basic stuff to create entry points because I don't know what to talk to you about. Correct. Right. Don't you like to have deep conversations, and if I try to discuss um, the latest happenings with a NASA rover or um, you no know, astronomy with you looking at me like I have three heads. Well, you say yeah. you like deep conversations, gonna go there. I don't like to talk about that stuff, but I can't have the small talk to build on to get to finding out what the deeper things are that go further below the surface. But yeah. people mm. don't, I don't like to talk about all that. So people say things and don't know what it is they're actually saying. They want things, but don't know what exactly it is that they want. So right. if I ask you a question, I give an answer, you answer, okay, cool, I can feed up off that. Ask him questions right back. Yeah. The dude Trump. should be the only person trying to find out about you on the date. Aren't you curious? You don't want to know who this is that you're sitting at the table with? Conversation Correct. is mm-hmm. a two-way street. If any yeah. one person's carrying the conversation, it's not going to work. You need to get in the game. That's why right. I'm so strong on reciprocal energy. I'm I'm a right. big advocate on reciprocal energy in all aspects of any interaction you're dealing with. Um, mm-hmm. I do want to say number 21, if she lets you drop her off, walk her to the door and text her once you get back in your car to make sure she is safe. Um, I will say as a woman to make sure that you tell him to text you when he gets home so he is safe. That's your part on the reciprocal energy of both of y'all safe. And it lets him know that you really, you really, really enjoy him if you want to know more about his safety. So I just wanted to add that into 21. Indeed. Hey, Mike, that's important. Um, safety is job one. Yeah. Absolutely. Real talk. I, I- I personally have a policy where if I'm dropping um a woman home and I don't even just do it for um for uh, my girl my um the girl I'm I'm dating or talking to, but I also do it for my um female homegirls, I do it for my boys too. If I'm dropping somebody mm-hmm. off or we're dropping off, my policy is I don't drive off until I see the lights come on inside. So mm-hmm. you don't the door closed because you do I mean, the odds aren't high, but you only need it to happen once before, you know, all hell breaks loose. You have some mm-hmm. cases where people are followed inside the homes or there might be someone there waiting inside. The lights never get on. If I'm posted mm-hmm. up there yeah. three, four, five minutes past, I'll call a text and say, hey, you good inside there? Oh, yeah, I am. And then once I get that confirmation, yeah. I'll go ahead and take out because in case anything about to go down, I need to know if I need to bust up in there. We need to get busy or, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So right. that's my policy. Um, also, to and- tack on to what you said, um, Major, for number two, I agree, especially yeah. with the card thing. And mm-hmm. I, again, I like the idea of the card. I actually want to be all in with all of that. But that's the romantic in me. Yeah. The practical mm-hmm. dude, the old savvy dude that's been around and lived some life and seen and heard some things, understands exactly what you said, that that can be taken the wrong way or send the wrong message, unfortunately. Because yeah, yes, yes the, because the reality is absolutely. I'm very thankful 
that um, any woman I take out on a date is willing to share her time and to make that sacrifice thing because there are other things that she can be doing. I'm very appreciative of that. But mm-hmm. that should also be the other way around too. I have things to do as well. My time is valuable to me, even if I'm wasting my time. I don't like people, right. people deciding how my time is spent. Even if I do nothing but sleep all day, that's my time. I have the right to decide mm. how I want to spend. So she mm. should likewise be thankful and grateful that I'm sacrificing my time, which is the most valuable resource that we have, to be with her. So I like the idea of sending her a card because t- because I understand that for a lot of people, even subconsciously, that sends the idea that your time matters more than my time. And that ain't the case. Your time doesn't mean more than mine, but my time is more valuable than yours. Our time is of equal worth. Now, exactly. The whole bouquet of flowers, bit of a commitment. I wouldn't do that. Now, what I would say is go ahead and just go get the single rose, get the single flower. If she mentions in conversation there's another flower she likes, whatever, go ahead and get her one or maybe I would say no more than three. One mm-hmm. is a bit more iconic. No more than three. Get her three roses, get her three carnations, three tulips. No more than three. One is fine. That's what I was so, saying. I do, mm-hmm. I do like those touches. So Jenny, Jenny wants to add in a nugget for the women. She wants to take it back to um, what was that movie that um, I know what she's gonna say because I was thinking. Oh, I, just didn't I forgot the name uh, of the movie. Y'all, Bronx y'all Tale, help? right? Bronx Tale. There you go. I, Bronx I, I know. She wants to give us a Bronx okay. Tale nugget. And if he opens the door, the car door for you, make sure you reach over and open his car door. And unlock it so he could get it. So a little bigger Bronx Tale. Big for knowing the classic. Yeah. Respect the classics. Yes. That's the Bronx me. Tale that my wife does that. Yeah. Nice. That's All G. Right. All right. So mm-hmm. next list I want to get to. I got a couple more real quick. Um, this was another list that came up. Here's a list of things men refuse to pay <laughs> for if we are not married. So here's... <laughs> What uh, the guys women, if we're not married, this is what we do, what we should not be doing. We should uh-oh, not be paying uh-oh. your bills. We should not be paying your rent, your house, car, note, none of that. We should not be paying for your hair, nails, bags, purses, jewelry, designer clothes. We should not be paying for vacation. Uh, furniture to go in your crib. We should not be paying for plastic surgery. Uh, we should not be paying for bottles at the club. Uh, I don't know what the hell Za and pills are. I don't know. Y'all educate me on that. Za uh, That's some low energy. Okay. That's some low energy. That ain't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Clock. We <laughs> said a lot of guns in here, man. That ain't. That's just, some hood monkey bullshit. Bro. When, I saw, when I saw the list, just. <laughs> Just when I saw that one item, I already knew who it was that came with this list. Like, yeah, this, this was this <laughs> was a nigga. So Bullshit. car repairs, nigga car repairs, food for another man's kid, gas, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, snacks, and your ties. Yo, that last so, one happened, like, man. I felt when I saw the last. Okay, oh so my God, God. God. Y'all agree with y'all agree with, y'all agree with this if he's not married. He should follow this list. Absolutely. Um, um, it, it, <laughs> well, for the most part, I mean, there's some things that, like, let's say y'all dating, you can you could buy a purse, uh, you know what I'm saying? You could buy a, some perfume or whatever the case may be. But yeah. to me, most of the things, most of the things on this list, even if you're married, you yeah. don't need to be paying for it. Like, to me, you're a low-level bum chick if you can't pay for things that have to do with your own personal grooming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if I, yeah. want, if I want to give you money for your hair and nails, cool. But if you're a yeah. woman who expect a man to pay for your hair and nails, that's low-level bum chick shit to me. I, I, I don't... I just don't subscribe to that, you know? And no woman yeah. I've ever been with has expected me to pay for her hair and nails. That's basic grooming. That's nuts. That's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, do you want me to wash you two in the morning? Like, <laughs> really? Do you want me to yeah. bathe you? To be, as, <laughs> and, and some of this is purpose, but here's the thing. Yeah. Refusing to pay for any of these things if we're, if we're not married, um, 
I don't necessarily agree with that, but what I will say is this. Mm-hmm. There is a there's levels to this. There's levels yeah. to everything in life. Right. Right. As a man, as any man, the mm-hmm. only thing that we are obligated, I'm going to rewind and say it again, the only thing that we are obligated to provide and protect for mm-hmm. is that which is under our last name. Yeah, that's true. Like 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 that Dame Dash true. said, like 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 Dame Dash said, I hustle for my last name, not my first name. Mm-hmm. I am only obligated to do for that which has my last name. Mm-hmm. If the woman doesn't mm-hmm. have my last name, if she ain't married to me, if the children's the baby, probably love the kids, but if the babies don't have my last name behind them, yeah, I'm not obligated to do a damn thing for any of them. Yeah, that's now, real. that doesn't mean that you know if you're dating if you're dating um a young lady or whatever that you can't pay for her nails or hair or whatever or or buy her a nice bag or whatever you can do those things if you yeah. want to you can even take it upon right. yourself and say hey you know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on a budget I got this covered for you that's fine he can do mm-hmm. that if you want to yeah. but that is out mm-hmm. of the kindness charity and goodness of his heart that's not yeah. nothing Real he's tough. responsible for. Correct. Mm-hmm. Even as a, even as a husband, he's not necessarily responsible for some of those things. It's up to him. But right. please believe, me. if a dude's saying, "You know what? I'm gonna go pay for your nails." You know, hey, babe, you know, you're gonna go out someplace real nice this weekend. Go ahead, here's some money for your uh, hair, your nails to get done. If I want you looking extra good, when you're out there with me. If he does that, the response, and not just externally, but the response internally should be one of gratitude, gratefulness, real appreciation, yeah. knowing that. He doesn't owe me this. He doesn't have to do me this. And if he doesn't mm-hmm. do this for me, that shouldn't cause me to penalize him. Well, you know, I'm not going to talk to him or I'm going to give him an attitude because he doesn't do this thing for me. No. If he does it right. for you, yay. That's awesome. You go, girl. Good for you. If yeah. he doesn't, mm-hmm. likewise, yay. Right. Awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Right. And, and I think... Must, uh, agrees with you. Yeah, Nima makes a great point, right? And this is what I also agree with Sorry, as well. Because I think a lot of times people don't look at it on the other side of the spectrum as well. Um, yeah. She says most men like doing things for their girlfriends. Some men enjoy doing a lot of these things. No, he's not obligated, but a lot like to do it. And I will Absolutely. say that's fine. I, I, I will say this, right? We have this constant chasing the dog, the dog chasing his tail argument, right? On both sides. Where we would say, we would go back to the old saying that why give away the cow um, if you can get the milk 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 free, right? Absolutely. But Mm -hmm. my thing behind that, I think is one of the most silliest sayings. And why I would say that is, right? Major, you're married. Yeah. A lot of people are married, right? Before you mm-hmm. got to that stage, you were doing things for your wife as a form of you being a husband without the title of it. The ring exactly. only solidified documents, but it never solidified you as a man in itself. You were always a husband mentally before you even signed the papers. <laughs> Your wife was doing things as a wife before she even got the ring, before she yeah. even got elevated to that level. So Absolutely. a lot of times when we sit back and say these things, you know, oh, I shouldn't do this before, you know, if I'm not married to you or this and that, you're doing basic things that people will sit back and realize that will make you a good husband or wife. When you look at all the things that you're bringing to the table, if I know you could cook good, if I know you over here and you tell me I come off a hard day's work and you're massaging me down or you're soaking my feet or doing a a manicure or a facial massage for me when I get home, these are things that a wife does. And you're not even a wife and you're doing this. So guess what? I'm like, shit, I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to elevate you. You know, vice you know what I'm saying? Vice versa, you know? And I think we got to take Listen. that into consideration and, and, and uh, into thought when we say these things. 
because you want to see what a person brings. This is why people always say, what do you bring to the table? You notice people of quality don't ask that. You know why? Because they, mm. they know their actions tell them what they bring to the table. And I land my plane on that. True. True. Indeed. No, bro, let me tell you. We need to understand that when we enter this dating and relationship conversation, when we enter that realm, you got a lot of people that don't think. They just repeat some shit At they all. heard somebody else say because it sounds smart and they're dumb. You did yeah. like let, let's just call it what it is. A lot of people just don't think before they speak. They open their mouth and shit just comes out. You mm. dig? And exactly. you gotta be wary and very careful of those people. Now, there is a valid argument to be made within that statement when mm. you're dealing with a predatory person. Yeah. You dig? When you're dealing with mm -hmm. a predatory person and somebody who's just out there, who's what we say on our energy, um, our energy show or on, on our emotional maturity show, an energy yeah. vampire. Yeah. If you're dealing mm -hmm. with an energy vampire and you're dealing with someone who is just, you know, uh, a succubus and, you know, is just volatile and you know who victimizes people and preys on people a predatory person a predator shout out jada pinkett smith when you're dealing with somebody like that mm -hmm. yeah you gotta be careful because sure. for that person yeah you can't give them too much because they're just gonna take advantage of you they're just there to use you anyway you understand yeah. what i'm saying but if you've done your proper vetting i'm gonna say this till i'm blue in the face you've done the proper vetting before even getting involved with this person you've already determined that this is a person of sound mind and body that is at least a quality person that you know has your best interest at heart and is coming to you in good faith and wanting to get to know you you dig so Correct. there's no need to be so overprotective of yourself if you've Correct. done the necessary work if that Correct. makes sense Correct. Correct. Yeah. I can make that. I, um, I personally believe that, um, you know, those things on the list, some things obviously I don't do or agree with, period, whatsoever. But some yeah. of those things on the list are really fine to do. I do believe, however, and for the people that don't subscribe to marriage, they feel like it's just a piece of paper, we don't need to get the state involved, then that's a different set of rules that they're operating by. So it is what mm -hmm. it is. But for those yeah. people who are marriage minded and they do believe in the importance of the nuptials and going ahead and making it official, I do believe that there should be, and that's not to be a bunch, but there should be at least a, a few things that are off the table. There should be a level of expectation that comes with, with uh, marriage. Because if you're literally doing everything else but getting married, then there really isn't much of an expectation or much of a reason to jump to the next level because you essentially are married without the paper. And by your actions, you have turned marriage into just a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. However, when you said it like, once you've done these things, these things I only do for a husband, these things I only mm -hmm. do for a wife, then that creates that expectation where, okay, well, you know, I'm ready for the next level of this togetherness with you because it's a process, right? It, it's 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 it's. I don't want to say it's a ritual per se, but it sort of is a ritual. It's a it's a it's a rite of passage. Once yeah. you've completed this step, now there's a greater level of access that ha that you have. If you're pledging in the fraternity or whatever, you might be um, you might be a, a pledge or and you're um you're in there, but you can't talk about the organization. You can't let anyone know what you're doing. You're kind of there, but not really there. You can maybe go to some parties or some um um events, but you're not really in there. But mm -hmm. then once you, you know, pay the dues, you've gone through the process, you cross and you go on, on the other side. Now you're official. Now you have greater access. And it means that more because as people, we ceremony matters to us. There's mm -hmm. a reason we get we get excited when we go through graduation, whether it's our kids graduating to elementary school, their elementary school graduation to middle school. Definitely when they have the mm -hmm. high school graduate, that's a big event because it signals a transition to the next level. Newer things, mm, bigger yeah. things. There's nothing fancy and nothing special, nothing significant about marriage or those or those any of those ceremonies if everything that you can do at that level is already accessible. 
Mm-hmm. If I can go out and get a job, if I can go out and get into college or whatever, and I didn't have to graduate first, the graduation is a big deal. That's just the day where I just waste time. But it's because it signifies that you're going to a higher level that's important. So in order for that to make sense from a marriage perspective, there should be at least a couple things that's off the table first. Like I will, we, we can go as far as this and no further. If you want it, I got to get the lady her props. Like she said, if you like it, then you got to put a ring on it. Hmm. Hmm. Fair. Well, let me let me just put this in, and, and, and we can just put a cap on it with this man, because I can prove all this is bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know how I can okay. prove all this is bullshit? I can prove all this is bullshit because. People out here talking about this and that. Oh, I'm not doing that in case I'm married. I'm not doing that unless I'm married. Until I'm married, but your ass will go and pop out a goddamn baby without being married, won't you? Mm. Won't think twice about it. And then a second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth one without being married. So I until, hold on to until that, you that, can, and that's, me. and that's definitely one of the things that should be on the list of things that's off the table. That should be the number one thing. We got millions and millions. 70% of black children are born out of wedlock. And you talking this, I won't do this before I get married bullshit. You saying that because you don't want to do those things. Let's just call it what it is and stop bullshitting. You don't want to do those things. So you're using the fact that you're not married as an excuse. But you'll show as hell go pop out a baby. You understand? You're sure you're sure as hell go out here and make sex tapes. I disagree. And send and send all send all these exclu- exclusive lewd pictures to niggas that you just met. You understand what I'm saying? But you want to bitch and moan about not doing something before you marry. Come now on, I couldn't, bro. Disagree. I couldn't disagree with you if I wanted to. It's all bullshit. I, I agree wholeheartedly. I'm just saying, yeah. look. If you don't want to do it, say you don't right want to do it. Look, don't use marriage as an excuse. That's all I'm saying. Period. Point blank. I'm just saying. I wish I had my key to sit by right now. <laughs> mm. All right. So let's get off into our first topic, which is our first yeah. trendly week, trendy weekly topics, right? All right. Let's so go. I noticed um, something that I saw which sparked my interest, which was, what is micro-cheating, right? So as men, <laughs> sometimes, uh, we yeah, 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 yeah. sometimes as men, we don't understand uh, some of these terminologies. And I, think I, really... I think I tagged you in that too. You tagged? Okay, cool. I think so. Um, so I thought this was very interesting, right? Uh, so what is micro-cheating? Mm. So I'm just going to show a list of things and then you know we can definitely discuss it. But this are some things that men and women that you might subconsciously do that don't realize it's micro cheat, right? All right, so the next one, the first one is deleting messages, all right? Mm. Next one mm. is secretly mm. messaging someone, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Next one is complaining about your partner to other people. Oh. Next one is Seeking friendship to other people you find attractive. Okay. Next one is maintaining contact with your exes or people you used to talk to. Okay. Uh, Next one is lying about your relationship status online and offline. Real talk. Next one is liking stories or posts uh, that someone your partner is uncomfortable with. Uh oh. Uh oh. Next one is trying to impress someone who isn't your partner. (laughs) Next one is having secret friendships. Next one is stalking someone you find attractive. Next one is turning to someone else when your relationship is rocky. The next one is always liking and commenting on someone's pic. And the last one is thinking or daydreaming about someone you have a crush on. So I saw this list and I thought that was interesting. So I just wanted y'all take on that. 
Wow, that's heavy. Um, yeah, I, th boss, I thought that was very interesting. All of that. All of that. Real yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. I don't do those things. You dig? Like, on some real shit. And this is part of my vetting process. Like, I talk about things like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I legit talk about things like that. You know, do you still keep in touch with your ex? You know what I'm saying? Are you one of these people who, you know, you need to post online to get attention and all this type of shit, whatever the case may be? That's part of my vetting process. Literally within the first seven days, I get mm -hmm. into those type of topics with people because people like to do little slick shit, little sneaky mm -hmm. shit. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And act like it's nothing. And then when, when you say something about it, oh, you're insecure. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I require full dedication, period. You did? Yeah. And like, if you, ain't, if you ain't ready to do that, I'm not to do it for you. You got to choose hard if you're going to choose me. You yeah. dig? And I always tell guys, you know, in order to eliminate a lot of the bullshit that a lot of guys complain about later on down the line, you need to talk mm -hmm. about this shit at the door. Mm -hmm. At the door, day one. You need to, hey, hey, is this what is this a problem? Do you be on this? Is it hey knock it all out early? I'm see guys be having this fear of loss. And when yes. I became when I became yes. a free man, I no longer have fear of loss. We yeah. could roll or you could stroll. I don't give a good goddamn either way. I like yeah. you, I'm feeling you. I don't know. Yes, Lord. Can a church say amen? Can yes, who the son has set free, mm -hmm. he is free in the preach, brother. Yes. No. yes. You, you did? Look, you got to yeah. be Look. that fear of loss will doom you. You yeah. got to say, hey, look, I like you. I'm feeling you. But if you're going to be in this program, if you're going to be in this sector, it's certain yeah. shit that ain't going to fly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And really listen, listen to her responses. If she's flaky or she waffles or she, eh, I don't know about that. Oh, I don't know, man. You know, I do kind of talk to my ex. Bye. You know, no. No, 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 no. And yeah, we we still good friends. You know, we was together for five years. And, and you know, we don't kick it no more. But we still good friend. No. No, okay, how fine you are, how big your ass is, how supple your breasts are. I don't care. You understand? Certain things, they're not going to fly, and it's for a valid reason. Because if we're going to really be about us, about this, that's it. You understand mm. what I'm saying? And that's how we mm. should be. So a lot of people do this little sneaky shit. And, you know, this is how, you know, some of these the where they, where they get that phrase that mommy's baby daddy's maybe you know what yeah. i'm saying i got a homeboy they tease this man all the time about how his daughter looked like his best friend mm. just saying you dig and the mama's mm. talking about oh he she looked like him because i hated him so much when i was pregnant i bet you did you dig it just don't mm -hmm. make no his mama say the yeah. kid don't look nothing like him. you you yeah, did it's hey, just funny. Some AKA, funny AKA, I can't stand you, Jody. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That that, type that, of that shit. gotta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, extend, extend, extend your car life. Uh, what link you're looking for? Uh, are you looking for your link to jump on there, yeah, or I don't know what link you're looking for? But explain that. What in the link? Comment. What link? What I don't know. What link I, you talking I, about, bro? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. But whatever link you're yeah. looking for. While, while he's know. saying while he's looking for that, or while he's uh, yeah. responding to that, um yeah. the I would say the overwhelming majority yeah. of that list is hundred percent valid and Teflon and bulletproof. A couple of those things I would say might be subject to the particular um people in the relationship because ultimately the relationship is your relationship. So Whatever yeah. confines, whatever boundaries you set in place are the boundaries. If one or two of those things on the list aren't a big concern for you or if you have guidelines for it, 
as long as both people will agree to it, it is what it is. It's your world. Um, however, the concept of micro cheating, which I only learned, um, I as soon as I saw it, I, t- I tagged y'all to it because I thought it was very interesting. Never heard about it before, but I like the concept because cheating, for the most part, we understand to be, of course, you know, when you in the act with somebody, and some would even say if you're planning to um, get in, in those situations with another person. But what we fail to understand is that there's a lot of things that leads up to this. Um, mm-hmm. And so we, people will say things like, you know, cheating isn't an accident, cheating isn't a mistake. But at the same time, mm-hmm. a lot of these actions before now, most of us would never have considered necessarily to be micro cheating or whatever. <clears throat> but all these things mm-hmm. will take, if you follow some of them, can definitely take you down a path where that's going to lead to cheating. And by the time you get to the point where it's time to cheat, mm-hmm. you know, it's almost impossible to not open the door. We have to be careful about that. Um, it's very it's easy. And, you know, sometimes, um, especially people who've never um, been in a position, they don't understand how cheating works. They'll just toss a blanket thing on it. Well, you know, cheating, cheating you chose to cheat, period. But many times, whether it's things that we've done or our partner has done, sets the stage for it. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, if you got ground, for example, you got, you got the ground outside, whatever. If you just go, you got like a whole bunch of rocky soil out there, some weeds and stuff, and you toss a seed out there, probably yeah. nothing's going to go ahead and grow in there. But mm. if you have done things to cultivate that soil, you got it all nice and rich, it's nice and damp, good quality soil mm-hmm. out there, no weeds on the choke, whatever. And the seed right. happens to miss and fall there because things happen. You know, as a couple, y'all going to have disagreements. Sometimes there might be issues that go on. Maybe you all are separated for work purposes. Someone's got to travel and they have to be away from the other person for a while. If the soil yeah. is ripe for this, you haven't done the due diligence to protect that soil. Now it's a lot easier for certain things to happen. Before long, you find out, well, I'll be damned. I never thought this would be the case. So you got to be mindful mm-hmm. of avoiding those things before you even get there. So cheating isn't, a ca- right. isn't as crazy as you slipped and tripped and fell on somebody's genitals. But at the same time, <laughs> it's not this process where someone hands you a contract that says, I hereby choose to cheat in this moment. I res- it doesn't work that way. Sometimes it's a whole lot more subtle before you realize what happens. Boom. That's it. So right. mm-hmm. I thought that this was very important and very critical for understanding that cheating is a process. Cheating, I would say, is a conveyor belt. And if you're not careful, yeah. if you if you're not careful, if you miss and hop on, and if you don't realize soon enough that you're on this conveyor belt, before long you're gonna reach a destination, and now you got a whole mess in your hands that you got to deal with. Correct. Real talk. No doubt. All right. We got a couple people <clears throat> in asking for the link. Um, I think I'm not sure if uh, extend your car life was talking about the, oh, link to join the panel. Me. Okay. Jesus TV. Said he wants Jesus TV says he definitely wants the link to join the panel, so he wants okay. to uh come in and say right. something. Um, panelists, you know, who, people who are calling in to ask a question or you know, voice a concern, we ask that you just keep it brief, you know what yeah. I'm saying, and we'll, we'll say what you got to say and we'll address it and, and discuss your point. Go ahead, go ahead, Ann. all right. Let me um drop the link, I'm gonna drop the link in there, and you guys can come behind the scenes. Um, if you want to join in just click the link and you'll be in the backstage and we'll have you up uh like major said you know i'll give you a couple minutes to say what you have to say um <laughs> and dissect what you need to dissect um and, and preferably preferably camera on uh-huh. preferably camera on it okay is. interesting a new term to define cheating cheating is cheating micro cheating ain't nothing new it's still cheating correct but I we agree. just wanted to show you. Uh, we yeah. wanted to show you the different forms of how they will still classify it as such, regardless of the terminology that they use. So when the people use it, at least you're familiar with what it is because we discussed it here on the show. All right. So next um, thing I wanted to get into was the question of the day, and the question of the day was. Um, Men, do you feel that, do you guys feel 
that a man who splits bills with his wife, whatever percentage, it could be 70, 30, 60, 40, 50, 50. Do you feel mm -hmm. those men are less of a man than a man that uh, pays 100% of the bills in the household? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I mean, I'm going to I'm going to breathe before I answer this question, because, boy, let me tell you that they have, uh, you know, it's an open box. We want to answer people's questions, but people have beat this dead horse until <gasps> it just can't breathe no more. Boy, me beating the hell out of the dead horse. What's up? What'd you say? Nima said that she's a cheater. Said, I can't believe it. She said she didn't know under the, under the term. Oh, she didn't know she was a micro cheater. Mm. I, I need so, you to get delivered, Nima. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go but ahead, man. No, no, men who pay half of the bills or less, even. That doesn't make you any less of a man. We have to get away from this mentality that how much money you put in the game necessarily makes you more of or less than a man. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, I would say that it is a best practice to mm -hmm. assume um, the 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 uh, the brunt of the cost for your home because. As a man, you know, you're made to kind of be the workhorse. You understand what I'm saying? That is that is part of your responsibility, but some different strokes for different folks. Some people have it worked out where 50-50 works for them. It makes sense. It still enables them to win. And, you know, women who aren't comfortable with 50-50, well, how do you feel with zero and 100? Because a lot of y'all, you know, that's the situation that you're going to be in if you're not comfortable with 50-50. You're going to pay 100% of the cost. And, you know, it really, when people split bills, people forget that that's a win. You understand what I'm saying? You have someone else assuming half of the living cost associated with your existence, period. So any way you slice it, that's a win. Let's say that it's 55, 45. At, at what point do you draw the line? If it's 55, if 50, 50 isn't good enough, what about 55, 45? What about 49, 51? How is that any different from 70, 30? You understand what I'm saying? Like, like um, I was saying, I think on a past show that we had, we had to get out of each other's way and find ways to win instead mm -hmm. of, going back and forth over, you know, the 50-50 type of thing or whatever the case may be. No, mm -hmm. it absolutely does not make you less of a man. However, um, I do feel that as men, we have an obligation to assume most of the responsibility for the cost in our home when we are capable. A lot of mm -hmm. times, the man might not be capable of, you know, 70-30 or 80-20, whatever the case may be at that time. Most of these things are adjustable as time permits. You understand what I'm saying? If yeah. you've been a leader for your household and you know you get injured and you can't work, now what? You know, you yeah. just had to take a, a 30 percent cut and you're on long term disability from your employer. Does yeah. that make you less of a man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It doesn't make yeah. you less of a man. But I do understand the concept. If you are not putting forth your best effort to, you know, be the financial leader of your home, I would say that makes you less of a man. But yeah. in and of itself, going 50-50 on bills, no, I don't feel that that makes you less of a man. All right, cool. What so are you, I'm, what are you gonna, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one, um, Major Hardly. First off, I really want us to get out of this concept of relationship dynamics in this regard, determining whether or not you're less of or more of a man. And if for no other reason, it's because I'm still waiting on someone to tell me what absence of anything results in a woman being less of a woman in a relationship. You How know, about that? If a man, if, if, if a man 
isn't paying all the bills, he's less of a man. Okay. If the woman isn't cooking for the household, at least the majority of the week, is she less of a woman? Mm. If she's not giving no up one yams, been. her significant other, as frequently as he likes, does that make her less of a woman? Mm. No one ever says that. If she, if she is not cleaning the whole household, if the baseboards ain't clean, shout out to my brother, uh, uh, <laughs> intellectual sniper JC. He dropped a post about that the other day, and that thing went supernova, boy. All the all the wasps, oh. all the yellow jacks, the hornets came out the woodwork work for that boy. I'm cool. <laughs> uh, I'm but cool. if she can't, if, if, if her baseboards are unclean, if she ain't got the house spick and span, is she less of a woman? No one says these things, and if you suggest it, then all of a sudden you're everything short of the devil, and maybe the devil as well. But you can cast mm. spirits on men, and it's just all good. Um, but no, right. I do not believe that it makes him less of a man or more of a man if he does it. Now, I do believe whether or not he pays all the bills or whether the bills are split and to what degree, I believe that those different things can help affect the dynamics of the household. Mm. And of that's based on individuals, what they prefer, what they desire to have, or what they're looking to get as an outcome. But as far as mm -hmm. is he less of a man for uh, paying all the bills or for, or for splitting them, not at all. That has nothing to do with his manhood whatsoever. All right. Uh, I will say that it should be, um, especially as you listed before, it is considered to be the primary role of the man to be the provider of the household. I do believe that the man should definitely be contributing financially to the household as well as other areas as well, because finances aren't the other contribution. But I right. also believe that a man should take it upon himself to, especially considering that we're in these times that we're in, the man should be taking it upon himself to try to increase his salary, his income, as much and often as possible. Not saying that he needs Correct. to be breaking his back and kill himself to do it, but a man definitely needs to be thinking ahead of the curve, seeing the way things are going and realizing that, you know what, things right now are barely tenable. There might be a come a time when where we are right now isn't going to cut it. Because mm. cost of yep. living is not going down, it's slowly growing upwards, upwards, upwards. And certain fields as technology advances are going to be phased out altogether. So certain jobs that you're working are going to become obsolete. And you can't simply say, mm -hmm. Well, I just lost my job, I can't do anything. You have to look at this you have to look at the times where you're at and say, you know what? This career ain't mm. cutting it. There's no growth in here. There's no real security. Maybe right. AI is coming that's gonna make your job, you know non-essential go ahead mm -hmm. and start looking at other fields that you can get into that are more lucrative they give you more security maybe where you live isn't sufficient cost of living is too high for your area maybe you need to look at relocating the family someplace where cost of living is less mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. then we should be actively on a regular basis looking at these things and making decisions and acting um accordingly because as the head of the household that means that we should be the ones running point and making these decisions um, with some intelligence and not just waiting for things to come and hit us before we have to react to them. Because that is not a good leader right there. That is not a good head of household. Right. You only make moves once, you know, you're on the reactive tip, not on the proactive tip. All right. That's what's up. Um, so we're going to go on to the next segment. Uh, you guys can wrap this up um, in a short time. It's uh, a question that was posed to us. Um, so we go into our next segment, which is Dear Men. Uh, Dear Men, mm -hmm. I advise uh, if you, sh uh, I would like to know, is this a good thing to do? Uh, yes or no? Um, but I would advise uh, men to take uh, your 21 days leave from work. Go home and tell your woman that you lost your job. Explain further that there was some losses and you had to use your savings to settle. Spend the next 14 days observing how you are treated at home and discover who you marry. Is that a good advice? Is that something we should do to test our loved ones? Yes or no, um, what do you have for that? No. To, um, to quote my brother Randy Jackson, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> That's a hard no for it's me. Actually, it's, it's, actually, it's actually a hell no for me. That's. 
Nah, bro. Nah. Look, we don't need to play games. You know what I'm saying? Like, those... Those of y'all that know me know I am a hardcore, straight up, balls to the walls person. I don't play. I'm very direct, very upfront. You know what I'm saying? If you need to test your relationship, just test it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just straight up, you know, there there will ways will come naturally to test your relationship, is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Without you, you know, creating some type of disaster. You know what I'm saying? To uh, to test how strong your relationship is or not. That that that'll blow up in your face, bro. Don't do mm. that. You know what I'm saying? But when those situations come up, make sure that you monitor what's going on. I'll give you an example with my wife. About a month and a half into dating my wife, I lost my job. Great job. You know what I'm saying? Um, about two months. Great job. You know, I just bought a house. You know, I mean, it, it was the perfect storm. COVID-19 had just dropped. I was working for a cruise line. And you know what happened to them cruise line jobs. You know, I was doing IT for a cruise line. It was mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. This, and so, you know, any that's a, that's a situation. That's a major event that's affecting your life. But like most yeah. major events that affect your life, it's not necessarily the event, but how you handle it that's going to determine you know what you what you're worth you know what i'm saying and and whatever the case may be and how she handled it and i paid attention to that as well she didn't bat an eyelash nothing about her change nothing mm. in fact the few things that did change about her change for the better she was more attentive she was you know asking you know if i needed help with this is everything okay can i help you you know in any way finding a new job you know you need me to update your resume for you, whatever the case, whatever I needed, she was there for. You understand? Yeah. That's how you test your relationship. The smallest thing come up, you know, when somebody on the outside of your relationship comes at you funny. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? We've been at family, we've been at family events before, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, somebody will say something, I'll come to her defense. You know, I know that it's just family and they're not really going at her. But I still come to her defense. That's my wife. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 hey. and, you know, um, look at me like, okay, um, look at me like, okay, this nigga real. Yay, <laughs> you dig? It's like, okay, this nigga real. That's what you want to be. You know what I'm saying? You got to show that you are ride or die, period. If you banging on me, if you ranking on her, I'm ranking on you. You know what I'm saying? And we just go That's get it. down like that. I could play the dozens too. Let's go. You feel me? You yeah. have to be unwavering, you dig? And that's what it is. We got some things in the comments that they wanted to share. And I'm going to pass it back to you or Bobby. Um, they want us to go over some of the comments. So go ahead. All right. Uh, real quick, what I'd say to that is, um, no, that is an absolutely dusty thing to do. Um, I'm not going to say that it was necessarily forged with dusty intentions, but the result is definitely dusty. Um, if anything, yeah. and I'm a flip the script because, you know, um, definitely looking out for the ladies as well, too. I would say that if your man comes to you, ladies, and lets you know that he's lost his job or whatever, and he's, you know, you know, he's lost a job and he's going to be out of work for a little bit or whatever. I would advise that you flip that into an opportunity where you can vet him and see what kind of dude you're with, what's under the hood and see how he responds. Yeah. Because see, here's the thing, though. Uh, we talk about we want women or period that the relationship should be for better, for worse and sickness and health, yeah. you know, richer, or poor, and all the other stuff. But here's the thing. You, the man, you're not just a man, you're the man. And most importantly, you're her man. So right, awesome. if you want to be considered a leader, if you want to be considered the head of the household, that dude, if you want to be looked at as him, he's him then tragedies are an opportunity for you to go ahead and flex on them. Yeah, it is. You know, the, the, the funny thing is, when everything is all cool, Superman is Clark Kent. He's out here doing journalism. He's reporting on uh, a brand new bakery opening downtown. When everything yeah. is cool, Batman is Bruce Wayne, and he's up at work at board meetings, and then he's getting lit at parties that night. 
All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When everything is all cool, you relax. But when crisis hits, that's when all the, the day job stuff goes goes away, and now it's time to go to work. That's when the muscles come out. That's when the weapons come out. It's showtime. Right. How you handle adversity is going to say a lot about who you really are. Are you the kind of man where if you mm-hmm. lose your job, you just all, woe is me. I'm depressed. I'm heartbroken. You're a shell of yourself, but now she's got to come for you the whole time, but there's no motion. Mm-hmm. Or are you the type of dude where the yeah. minute you get your papers... You already kicking out your resume on LinkedIn. You already hitting up on your contacts. Hey, what's up, man? You got any openings over here or whatever? Or you pound the pavement, going door to door, knocking on everything. You got 50 applications that you're cranking out uh, a day. You have a set goal of how of how long it's going to take you to come get your job back. Or you've come up with plans. Look, babe, I have X amount of money saved. Um, the market is really dry in this area. How do you feel about relocating somewhere else? Do you have a plan, my ninja? Yeah. Yeah. Because we tell women that we want them to go ahead and be the ride or die and hold us down those bad times. But the problem is you ain't got no motion. Mm-hmm. You ain't got no plan. What is yeah. it that you want her to get behind? Mm-hmm. Now, right. if she sees that it's all hands on deck, that the Titanic is sinking and the captain over here getting lit with the band while they're playing a uh, 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 case in the sunshine band, then, of course, she's going to panic. She's going to have bad feelings. She's not going to be very supportive. She's not going to be that ride or die that you want. But if she sees, okay, it's DEFCON 5, but baby has got a plan. He's executing. He's making moves. And I see it's not just pie in the sky stuff, but it's practical. That's going to let her know, okay, something's going on, but baby has got to cover. Let me watch my man work. I All think, right? I, yeah. And I think that's what... I think that's what Teddy P had said earlier in his comment. Uh, he was saying that I think mm-hmm. a man that says you never have to work is a short-lived sentence. He knew a HVAC business owner that fell 10 feet, broke multiple bones, and it was his wife and kids that worked his biz for him. So because she already knew mm-hmm. that he already soaked uh, a lot of value into his woman, and you know, through that, they built a family, a, a great structure. When he fell off, right, literally, even literally or figuratively, uh, they were able to pick up the slack and make sure that they uh, covered the basis of it. So, um, like you say all the time, your wife, your spouse, <laughs> is always going to be that foundation for you. That's why it's always critical to, to to have a great spouse. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. And I think. Uh, what um me what's her name uh earlier she said it uh nima right nima, nima. said mm-hmm. yeah nima said uh earlier that she was like uh i want to post it up real quick she said uh once you get you know the papers your relationship is officially a business so once you're married you bring that foundation you're a business so even if you fall in your business your business partner, which is your wife, uh, in that instance, uh, takes over and now basically is taking over the business while you're healing to be back at your 100% status. Or it could be a shift that is life threatening where you might have broke your spine or whatever the case may be. And now they have to permanently take over and you are the one being taken care of. So you know, when you ride this ship of life together, you just never know how it's going to go, but you always want to make sure that if you're a solid captain, to always have a solid co-captain on there, or if you're a pilot, to always have a solid co-pilot with you as well. Uh, Yeah. With that being said, I definitely want to get into our last segment, which is uh, the crown check, right? So we're definitely going to do crown check because we got to get up out of here. Um, so this week, uh, crown check, I think, uh, it was super dope because we want our whole mission of our segment is always to highlight the great things women do. Um, yes, we always, uh, highlight some of the things that, uh, we don't want to see women do. That's because we want to make sure that our women that are out here doing great things and continuous of 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 a uh, image of greatness that our black women has always carried this crown to be we don't want that to be dirtied up so we always want you guys to be on a path 
of greatness that you were always destined to be. So when you see you falling off and we're giving you a little critique, we're critiquing you because we know the, how powerful you are and what you, the line you should be on, on a continuous uh, motion. So with that being said, we wanna highlight a pioneer and a lot of people might not think there's a pioneer in her field, but trust me, representation matters. And when we look at the swans and we look at the beautiful women out here that uh -huh. expose the elegancy yeah. and the people that mm -hmm. um, yes, sir. That, that dances and, and the choreography that a lot of these black women has so creatively constructed over the years and the, the essence of how they flow and vibe as ballerinas and in their art form, you know, we have to definitely acknowledge this queen here who is Misty Copeland, right? So Misty Copeland right. is an American ballet dancer um, in theater, one of the three leading classic ballet companies in the United States. On June 30th, 2015, Copeland became the first African-American woman to be promoted to the principal dance in ABT 75 year history, right? So she uh, went on and in California in the 1996, uh, convinced Copeland to attend a ballet class at her local Boys and Girls Club. And Cynthia Bailey, a friend of her mother's, uh, taught a free ballet class at the club once a week, right? So it goes on to say that like her mother told Copeland that she would have to give up ballet, but Bradley uh, wanted Copeland to continue and offer to host her, right? And agreed to this and mm -hmm. Copeland moved in with Bradley and her family. Eventually Copeland and signed a management contract um, and a life uh, story contract with Bradley. Um, Copeland spent the, week at, with the weekdays at home with her mother a two hour bus ride away, Copeland would spend most of her next three years with the Bradleys. By the age of 14, Copeland was the winner of a national ballet contest and won her first solo role. Uh, she also, um, I wanted to highlight, in addition to her dance career, Copeland has become a public speaker, celebrity spokesperson, and a stage performer. She has written two autobiography books and narrated a documentary about her career challenges, right? She was named one mm -hmm. of the most influenced people in the world by Time Magazine, appearing on its cover. She performed on Broadway in It's a Town, uh, toured on Future Dance for Prince, appeared on reality TV, television shows, A Day in Life, and So You Think You Can Dance, she has endorsed products and companies such as T-Mobile, Coach, uh, Inc., uh, Dr. Pepper, um, The Dan and Company, and Under Armour. Um, and the reason why I brought up the post about her mother and her friend, uh, we, when we talk about building, nation building, community building, um, a lot of times people, uh, what we see nowadays is when somebody's child gets hurt, or somebody's child gets killed, we don't have any empathy for that family. The first thing we say is, oh, that's not my child. But the next week your child gets injured or your child gets killed and now you run around here talking about why y'all don't sit back and campaign for my child? Because when somebody else's child got killed, you didn't campaign for their child. And the village mentality is every child is our child. So even if you don't have children, when you see children in your community, they're your children. They need your protection. They need your guidance. When we were growing up, a lot of the drug dealers told us, don't bring your ass out here on the streets. I'm going to tell your damn family members. And that's what they did. They told our brothers. They told our mothers. They told our fathers. And we got an extra whooping um, because the drug dealers told us that's not our place to be out on the street. Go out there and go make sure that you're getting the good grades and everything else. And that's how a lot mm -hmm. of our society kept in line and kept the code of conduct because even our drug dealers had a code of conduct. We don't have that nowadays mm -hmm. and we need to bring that back. So the fact that the mother wanted to pull her out because she couldn't afford it and the, the friend said, hey, I'll sponsor her. And not only will I sponsor her, she can come live with me while she learns everything. And that just turned her whole life around because she had that Amazing. village to back up her mother. 
Um, so I just wanted to highlight yeah, that cool. point. Uh, super dope story. You got to definitely read more about Misty Copeland on your own. But that's it for tonight's show. Thank you, gentlemen. And I'll turn it over to you guys. Man, yeah. Hell yeah. with reading yeah. about Misty Copeland. You need to watch Misty Copeland, man. Yes, you do. She Misty's is sensational. Truth. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, when y'all get the chance, go ahead and look up. Uh, I think it was like several years ago. Go ahead and look up her uh, doing Swan Lake with the L.A. Philharmonic Orchestra. You want to talk about poetry and motion? O M G. The Sick. system moves like she's made of silk. It is mm, beautiful. Yeah. De yo, dead ass serious. Don't be surprised if you miss and feel like a little mist or something popping up in your eyes. I'm telling you, it's beautiful stuff. She is phenomenal. Um, and of course, no scandals or anything that I can um, think of that's been issued. Um, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to find role models of people to look up to in certain areas because we're all flawed people. But mm -hmm. Mr. Copeland is truly an amazing ambassador for the world of dance. She's an amazing um, human being. I haven't heard a single bad thing about her. Everywhere she goes, she's loved. She's respected. Truly a wonderful sister, great human being. Um, if you're looking to find some inspiration for your, your young ladies, your young girls to look up to, Mr. Copeland is somebody safe that you can put in front of her. You know, and uh, again, achieving at high levels breaking all kind of barriers, really a pioneer in the world of ballet, not just in terms of, you know, first blackface this, but really, you know, really carrying the world of dance to the next level. Um, definitely get to know, if you ever have a chance to see her live, if you find out the, um, the ABT, the American uh, Ballet Theater, is uh, coming through your town or somewhere nearby, go ahead, get you some culture, cop a ticket, sit and watch, it's going to be money well spent. I'm waiting for her to come back through here again. As soon as I see that, I'm on the first thing smoking. Mm. Real talk. Oh, oh, oh. Go ahead, man. She, yeah, she, she is phenomenal. Nothing short of amazing. You got to go see Misty Copeland, even if you just pull her up online. You get your mouth open and you can't close it. Like we said, representation matters. Representation is a big deal. We have people in the comments saying that their daughter loves her and you know their daughters want to be ballerinas because of her two people in these comments right now watching this show and That's you know this is just a random show and we're getting that type of feedback so you know we need to be very mindful of these things how important it is to see black faces in certain places um tonight's show was important you know um when we start talking about lists that we want to put out there. Let's make sure that we're presenting these lists in the proper light. You understand what I'm saying? We're coming to the table with good energy. We're putting out things that are helpful to the dating and relationship conversation because black relationships and black marriage, the black family is in a state of crisis right now. We don't need this little bullshit, you know, um, these low energy lists out here denigrating, you know, the places that men like to take women or the play, the type of men that are out here or the type of women that are out here. You know, we need people putting out things in good faith that contribute positively to the conversation to make us come together in the spirit of togetherness and cooperation so that we can build, you know what I'm saying? And find common ground because at the end of the day, I promise you, all that whining and complaining about all the places where, you know, all the high level places that guys ain't taking you and, you know, all the sorry ass guys out here and all the sorry ass women out here ain't going to help you find a good one. It ain't going to change nothing. You know what I'm saying? You need to become what you want to attract and you need to put the type of energy out there that's going to reel in, you know, someone that's on your level when you become that person. And then y'all build together, man. Like we're we're better than this. You know what I'm saying? So I want to see more positivity out there among our people because we can do it, man. You know, we have positive conversations here every week. Positive, adult, mature conversations that move us all forward. You know what I mean? So like I would like to see more people 
doing that and stop slinging so much mud back and forth because it's counterproductive and it don't mean nothing. And I'll land my plane. Definitely so dope, so eloquently put. Uh, thank you guys for joining, men and women. Uh, super dope. We had a great week. Yeah, me and Major was on another platform and we had a great, great dialogue. Um, we'll definitely next week have you guys listen to the feedback of somebody that uh, wanted to share how hard we had touched them so much that they broke down crying. Um, we have the audio for that. We'll definitely share that with you guys next week. Um, thank you guys again for joining in. Uh, it was a great dialogue. We needed this dialogue. Um, and just remember to tell a friend to tell a friend. Follow like on all social platforms. If you know this is a great platform for you guys to get great dialogue. Anything that you guys uh, want to discuss with, we got a show coming up where we're going to do about uh, our followers and anybody that joins in. We're going to have a show dedicated to y'all. Y'all could just jump online with us, chop it up with us. And let's just spew the stuff before heading into the new years. Um, so definitely uh, check us out next week as we get everything together and have another wonderful show for you guys. All right. With that being said, yeah. we're up out of here. All right. Peace out, family. Night. Bless up. On the album, we do things like uh, songs that are a little, what we call, sexy. You can see from the title, it's more of a love album. Mm -hmm.